internet. Hi Bozen here. We are back this week with the build video for the Perusa i3 from Sanoki. Um, this week's going to be slightly different in the way it's done. Um, the time index will pop up there for part 10, which is the bit we're covering this week. Um, this is going to be slightly different because I've been trying to edit this video for a week plus more. Well, actually, since part D video, I was hoping that this was going to be in part D. It was a nightmare to edit. To be honest, it's me being stupid and idiotic and talking in all the wrong places and doing all the right things. And plus, this is at part 10 where the instructions really started to go not so much helping you out as hindering you, I think. So I was having to try and figure out a lot as I went along and so it meant a very rambly video, etc. It's nearly an hour's worth of footage that I had to bring down. I think it's coming down to somewhere like... I've still just got to finish it off in a minute, but it's like probably only going to be 10 minutes or less. Um, but what I needed to do was, in the end, just capture the bits of video that showed doing what you needed to know. And I'm going to actually do a voiceover over the top of it. So in a moment, after I've finished here, I'm going to be going indoors, uh, back in there, and trying to record a voiceover over what I have edited. So hopefully that will work out. Uh, and I think it might be the way forward for some of these videos, because I think it might be a bit better if I'm not trying to concentrate on talking you through things as I'm doing it. Maybe I'll probably be able to produce better videos. But we'll see how this one goes, and I'll take it from there. Anyway, babbled on long enough for... Uh, Let's go on with the video. Back on to part 10. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. Oh, before you go to part 10, actually, uh, I just suddenly remembered uh, another reason why I was having trouble editing. Uh, I meant to say this a second ago, but I forgot, was the camera that I use here for the downward shot showing the pieces actually uh, stopped running about five, ten minutes into the build. Uh, so it was pretty much still fully populated at the time and po fully populated I found out later was some of the wrong nuts and bolts and stuff because like I said the instructions aren't very helpful at this point um, so that was another reason so there will be some differences in as and when it comes to taking apart or getting apart I'm going to do something either on the screen down here saying what it was or somewhere else maybe but probably about here um, so that's just another thing to look out for that'll be slightly different as well I hope to try and keep this whole thing very uniform, but hey, technology is technology and it's fun and it goes wrong on you sometimes. Anyway, now we can get on with part 10 because I've remembered, I think, pretty much everything. Yeah, I think so. Let's get on with part 10. Hi there. I will have to first apologise if the volume is a little low on this, as I am doing this when others have gone to bed. But what we need for this part are one extruder motor, two plastic parts, 12 M3 by 12 millimeter bolts, four M3 by 16 millimeter bolts, two M3 by 18 millimeter bolts, and 16 M3 nuts. Parts that are not being displayed right here, but you'll see as we go along, they are going to be two M8 feed rods, 470 millimeters long, I'll learn English in a minute, two times M8 feed rods at 340 millimeters long, and two T8 lead screws at 300 millimeters long. Okay, that's covered the basic parts. Let's get into this. In this first bit here, when we put an extruder on, we need one extruder motor, four M3 by 12 mil bolts, and four M3 nuts. Here you can see I'm attaching the extruder motor to the top left hand as you look at it from the front of the frame. Now this takes four of those M12 bolts as you saw in the bit at the beginning here. And as you can see here what I'm trying to do is first fiddle and need three hands to try and do a job as you normally do in these situations. And it's just a case of holding the bolt behind the, uh, the black part you can see there and screwing the bolt in from the front. It's a little bit easier on the top one. Once you've got one in and it's being held up, it's far, far easier. So as you can see now, I'm just starting to get the second uh, nut and bolt all in and done up. Normally a little trick that I would do here is I would actually kind of use things like blue tack to maybe hold nut in place behind somewhere fiddly and tricky like that. 
But alas, on the day that I did this, I'd, I'd run out of blue tack, so that wasn't an option for me. And, oh, as you can see as I'm tightening it there, the bolt at the back is, uh, nut at the back is spinning around, so I use my tweezers. Now I'm using my tweezers to come up behind from the thing and try and just get that last one in. Now like trying to be a complete ninja and drop the nut and bolt. Yes, it happens and it will happen a lot when you're building this. And finally I managed to defeat it and get the four in. Now the next bit here include needs two plastic parts, four M3 by 16 millimeter bolts and as it disappeared and four m3 nuts now here as you can see i'm just taking the um plastic coatings off the, the plastic parts which we've done in all the other stages you should have done that plenty of times by now okay now we're just uh popping on this top piece here and this bit here requires two of the uh, m3 by 16 millimeter bolts on each side so we just need two for this size, so you just pop in the screw in coming in from the front there and screwing down into the nut That's and then there's another one just coming in from the side piece here and you just sneak that in under there drop your bolt in and tighten away something, you know it's the standard procedure of the retention screws on this and then get your uh, Allen key stuck and jammed as I do regularly with these. Seems to get locked into the heads a bit and you have to <coughs> the damn things out. Okay, as you can see there they are. Two of them there. Now it's just a case of uh, popping the second uh, plastic piece on. hope my peas aren't popping too heavily on this. I have to be quite mi close to the microphone at this time of night for this. And uh, so we just pop that on. Again grabbing the m3 by 16s popping them in tighten away try not to drop nuts and bolts all over the place although that happens quite regularly on this build okay right now we're moving into the next stage here you can see i've got the piece we made earlier with the stepper motor on and we're going to need two of the feed rods of 340 mils on this 2 M3 by 18s, 2 M3 by 12 mils, and 4 M3 nuts. So we're just going to take uh, the 340 mil rod there, take it in through the top, down through the uh, box slider, and into the the plastic piece at the bottom. Here you see I'm now prepping one of the M3 by 12 mil bolts with a nut on it ready. And here we're going to be using doing the kind of retention screw technique we did with the the lower slide. As you can see it there and that just holds the rod in place I'm going to look at the way that holds things in uh, as you can see I'm just pointing out the bottom there where the next one's going to go which is the M3 by 18 mil bolt and the M3 nut like I said I was saying I'll have to look a little bit later at the way they're held in because all well, that seems to be doing the job oh, and there's me dropping them again and hunting for them as they do the job but I, I don't know I think I could probably make look at other ways of uh, stopping them disappearing out of there but as you can see with me pulling it around there it's in quite securely and that's can slide up and down and it's not falling out of place just feel like there might be a better way okay now we're going to grab the other piece we made earlier with the uh, t8 copper nut on and the other long box slider and again you're aiming to line up the copper nut with the coupler on there and then slide the neck the the other 340 mil feed rod in grab the other couple of 12 mil by th m3 bolts and a couple of m3 nuts and uh oh sorry grab the one 12 mil bolt at this stage sorry because it's a 12 mil one at the bot top and the 18 millimeter one at the bottom on this so there we go i'm just tightening that in place you can see at the moment the rod's sticking up just a little bit it's because I've just got it resting on the plastic plate. It's not actually pushed through. And then I got that basically tightened up. Then I loosened it off. Managed to drop the rim of the rod into position. And then tighten it up. It meant I wasn't trying to hold the rod up. Now I've got grabbed the 18mm bolt. M3. To go down into the bottom of the section there. To secure the bottom of that rod. 
And here I am lifting the print up to try and get a slightly better camera angle on that. Rightio, this next bit here is uh, needing two of the M8 feed rods at 470mm long, four of the M3 by 12 mm bolts and four of the M3 nuts. What these feed rods are doing, they're going to be doing the, like, the horizontal slide. Oh, don't worry about that rolling down, it's just that I had uh, my tweezers under the back, making it all unlevel. So what you do is then you need to grab your printer head that you made earlier. And then what you need to do is grab that, make sure that obviously the print head's pointing down, the red plastic bits at the front. And here I'm showing you that the two, there's your two short box sliders. And uh, your two rods are going to come through the side of those uh, pieces you've just put onto the other rods a minute ago. And then through those sliders. So here I go. I'm putting the bottom rod in. And uh, now the top rod. You'll see the holes on them there. And they should be pretty easy to find. And then I've just put them partially in. Both of them in. So I can then easily get it through. And then just shove them both through. Now I'm just going to hook them in and fiddle and mumble under my breath at the time I think I was doing I can't even remember and it's been a while yep get it in there Lee you know you can come on come on come on boy you're not that thick you can get it in there there we go and here I've tipped it up on its end just so you can see where the rods are coming through on that piece there and where the uh, the nut uh, tighten up and what have you the m3 by 12 mil bolts there's two on each end, so that's why you need the uh, four. Oh, I didn't pop up the uh, M3 nut um, bit on there, but I can zoom. I'll probably pop that on before you guys see it. So what I'm mumbling about now makes no sense. Okay, here I am spinning it around now just to uh, pop the other two. Now here you can see I had to go to my pop because, as I was saying, the instructions on these weren't brilliant and they were about four nuts and bolts short on what they said so i had to kind of figure it out as i was going on as you can see i was looking on the floor for a, a nut i dropped earlier hopefully i won't need that and it's a quick and easy enough to pop these bits on to be honest this printer is probably quite probably quite quick to build and relatively easy to build if it's just taken me so long and i've had such a long downtime in the middle because Every time I want to try and do anything on it, I have to make sure I've got multiple cameras set up and things like that. So that's why it's been taking me quite a while to get where it's get. At the moment, it is sitting at the end of this stage. So hopefully before next week, he says, I'll have time to get this all, at least the next couple of steps done. Okay, so... There's me just showing how it can slide back lovely and... And how I don't want the rods to shoot out and impale me in a cool fashion. But anyway, now we need the two T8 lead screws, 300mm longs. These are going to give you your Z-axis. And this is what lifts the printer up and down. I'm lifting it up there towards the camera so you can now see, you know, I've had to use the long shot on most of this because it just, that camera angle, unfortunately, you just couldn't see what I was doing too well. And you, you just screw them round and through and down until you get it into the coupler now you might wonder why I'm screwing it through and that making it sit all the way up the top there when it would have been just two seconds to screw it through and have it at the bottom I want it out the way of the uh, the bed going back once more because obviously I've still got a bit of the heat bed and other things on so it's best just to keep the head up and out of the way now as you see there I was uh, I tweaked the uh, grub screws on the couplers because when I was trying to put that in there it caught so just remember to make sure they're undone enough so you can get your your lead screws in there so now I am just trying to get it a bit further up and out of the way try and level it up as well I'm trying to eyeball it a bit level so when the time comes for calibration and other things hopefully I won't have so much fiddling to do Come on, Lee, you happy yet? Oh, left a bit, right a bit, left a bit, right a bit. Okay, now I've got that all done, and what have you, I've now re-tightening up those grub screws. And that's basically it. Once those grub screws are done, uh, that is this stage of it done. That's part 10. So, as you can see, I look quite pleased with myself for some reason. God knows why. Anyway, 
So uh, that'll be the end of part 10. And I'm now going to go back to the outro and move on to the next uh, next week. I'll catch you in a bit. Bye. Okay, I hoped you liked that. Uh, I know it just cut off at the end, whereas I usually say, oh, that was the end of part whatever. But like I said, it was a slightly different scenario. But I hope it went well. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover version. And I hope to see you back next week. Uh, as you can see at the moment, this is still at the stage as you saw it at the end of that video, really, pretty much. So before next week's video, I actually have to continue building this. I finally have to get off my touche and finish the build on this so I can have next week's video. Or at least get a few steps along so I can have them ready for next week's video. Anyway, if you want to catch me up on things like uh, social media, you can get me on Twitter uh at hi bosun uh apart from that hope to see you next week if you like like if you dislike dislike to uh, subscribe and all that lovely fun stuff and what have you anyway i've got to get on and i've got to go back in now and finish this editing because it's like nearly 10 o'clock at night on wednesday and you want this on thursday so i've got to get back in there and finish doing my job see you next week bye <laughs>